Hi, I'm Teddy Neptune and this is an unusual video. Unusual for four reasons or let's say three reasons or maybe four. It depends on whether I need one more reason or not but there are definitely three reasons at least, okay? One, upload after almost a year and um, I do understand if people are upset, disappointed, annoyed, whatever. Um, even angry fair enough okay I make videos I make a lot of videos one time and I say yeah I'll make more I'll make more I take your request yeah thank you for your request thank you for then I don't deliver and um, of course you might be disappointed you know fair enough uh, I see some kind of responsibility the moment that you um, have a have some followers okay and so yeah but regardless, don't take the videos and the contents of some idiot on the internet who is just making it for fun too seriously, okay? Um, this is really just a hobby. So far I haven't earned a single cent from my um, videos on YouTube and it was never meant to be a job, a career. The, the second reason is... Um, Apart from my full-time job, I also have other work to do, which I basically forced on myself, the work, uh, which is a major project that I'm working on. It is something that you do when you have no life, but you still need to do something, okay? Um, I want to become an author, okay? The idea was there a long time ago. I started actually working on it as a New Year's resolution, immediately set into motion the beginning of January 2017 um, my my first novel and the first series of books um, accompanied by visuals and music that I compose all done by myself and I will talk about this in my other videos in the near future hopefully and I will also present my music etc Reason number three as to why this video is unusual is because today is my birthday, March the 1st. This is the night or the morning into March the 1st as I am recording right now. Okay, so um, happy birthday Teddy Neptune, yay me. I am going to enjoy my birthday week until Armageddon. <laughs> Yeah, it might be my last birthday, depending on whether the Russo-Ukrainian war escalates or not. Um, I mean, more than it already has. Yeah, and um, this brings me to my last point. Okay, so yeah, four reasons why this video is unusual. I do want to talk about the Russo-Ukrainian war. Okay, so a little disclaimer. I am not against Russians in general, okay? In fact, I don't think... Any ethnic group that exists is any better or worse, okay? I am pro-humanity, okay? So, um, I believe wholeheartedly that every ethnic Russian, just like every ethnic Ukrainian, Pole, German, Dane, um, Malawi, Nepali, or whatever, all of them are born into this planet, into this world, from a mother with the help of a father whether the father is there or not it doesn't matter this is how biology goes they're all born with skin flesh bones and blood and um, they all have intelligence yes there's you know individuals who are smarter can sing better can run better whatever but overall they are all pretty much the same when they are born and then the society around them, the politics, the media, the propaganda, the parents, you know, the upbringing, the education from both um, adults or older people, including older siblings or cousins or whatever, who um, live around them or with them and school. These things, they shape the people and this is also why some countries have a tendency to have more educated people than others. This is why in some countries, like 
many African countries the um, IQ is lower than in many European or East Asian countries because the the environment okay the environment not just being the geographic location or the flora and fauna and the chemical composition of the food or whatever but also the people who influence others they make the character and no ethnic Russian is inherently better or worse than any ethnic Ukrainian okay just to get this out okay just to be clear this is in no way a video that is uh, meant to be used for some kind of racist or xenophobic uh, reasons okay now this wouldn't be the first time a major nation invades a smaller nation under false pretexts okay let's be clear here the US NATO um, indirectly therefore also Germany the country where I live I mean if we ignore World War II for example just recent history this wouldn't be the first time a situation like this happened and um, it is not just what about ism to point it out however it does not change the fact that we live in 2022 and not in 20, uh, 2003 I mean uh, so what the US did in Iraq for example as bad as it was it doesn't change the fact that what Russia is doing to Ukraine now is still bad okay so um, there is some double standard it is true there is there's some hypocrisy that is true but at the end of the day it doesn't change what is happening now and what is happening now should still be called what it is okay an invasion an aggression it is Russia fighting an offensive war against Ukraine and that shouldn't happen you just just call it out okay and um, two wrongs don't make a right and um, it is also a more global problem than Iraq because we know that the the sold weapons of mass destruction thing was a lie okay Saddam Hussein was a bad guy okay if he had weapons of mass destruction he would have gotten them from the US anyway so it was play stupid games win stupid prizes he was propped up by the US he was a loose end the US wanted to get rid of him and um, now with Ukraine you have something that is more at stake here I'm not just saying this because I live in Europe and um, it might affect me more directly if you're wondering how that would be if you point your finger at Ukraine on a map and then you slip accidentally a little you might end up in Germany and point at basically me so that's how close it is and also uh, that's my bias but now objectively speaking Russia has nukes and threatened to use them okay the US never threatened to nuke Iraq as far as I know correct me if I'm wrong but there was never such um, discussion it was really just um, an international joint operation take down Saddam Hussein topple the regime I personally was against it even as a kid back then okay just so you know but just saying it was different and even if you think it was the same it doesn't change the fact that now the situation is still bad and should be called out um, as what it is okay when you look at the map okay and let me show it to you maybe a bit small if you look at this map you can see a few things this is um, this is Google Maps okay um, satellite image so here you have desert okay most desert and also mountains it is very unlikely that anyone would invade Russia from there uh, we are not going to go into East Asia because um, this makes things too complicated and um, I don't think Russia ex expects 
any direct threat from there. As far as I know, I could be mistaken. Then you have the Caspian Sea. Um, a sea land invasion is risky for the aggressor, so it's also not likely. Plus, coastal defenses can make it very difficult for anyone who wants to get there. Then you have the Caucasian Mountains. Really good defense. Then you have the Black Sea. And now with control of Crimea, this is also a good way to defend Russia. I'm not talking about Russia from the moral point of view, just from a, a military point of view, okay? Trying to get um, their perspective, okay? So just so you know, I am not trying to justify what Russia does. I just want to explain why or what kind of logic is behind it, okay? So then, assuming, assuming Ukraine falls under Russian control, then you would have the Carpathian Mountains. Okay, I don't know if you can see it well. If I zoom in, maybe you can see it. These are mountains, okay? Green like vegetation, but these are mountains. They keep enemies from invading over land. There is this gap here, but you can use this in a way that, for example, the Greeks used against the Persians, the Thermopylae uh, situation here. Maybe not as thin. Uh, there's still going to be some more um, uh, fighting to be done to uh, save this area here. But still, it is a defensible position here. And then you have this area. Assuming Belarus stays in uh, Russia's sphere of influence, I mean, um, Let's be honest, Belarus is basically a Russian puppet state that doesn't know it yet. And Lukashenko is Putin's bitch. Okay. Sorry for those harsh words, but um, it is what it is. Now, so we have Belarus as well. The Baltic states can be a problem. This corridor here between Russian Kaliningrad and Belarus, that one is also a narrow gap. And then you have this area here, this area. This is basically a flat land that, you know, lies between Poland and this kind of Russian, now occupied Ukrainian and um, Belarusian um, um, area here. And if you can at least narrow everything down to only have this uh, line here that is a significant gain for Russia okay um, I am not saying that this is morally right or anything just saying from a military point of view this would be quite useful for Russia okay I am not in favor of that but Look, uh, worst case scenario for Russia, okay, map again. Imagine you have the Estonian coast all the way down here. Follow my mouse if you can see it, all the way down to this part here. I mean, holy shit, this is a lot of land, a large frontier, large area to cover if you want to avoid uh, enemies from breaking through and it is flat land mostly there are some hills of course there are rivers there are some uh, locations which can be defended more easily but in general this is not the best defensive position okay the vegetation the the woods they don't really make it that better okay in um, Asia, at least you have the Ural Mountains, you know. Um, okay, so here the, the Ural Mountains, which at least provide some kind of um, barrier in case there's like a real serious invasion. Hey, I don't want to see the planet. <laughs> in case there's a serious invasion from, uh, I don't know, China, although that is very unlikely because why would China do that to um, Russia? They might do that to Taiwan, but that's a different story. Uh, yeah. So, 
it is not completely out of nowhere. This is why I wasn't surprised. But my first reaction to the invasion, when it was like official, like a real invasion invasion, was anger and frustration because I expected Russia to just take over the airspace and with that and with help of the artillery to just cause so much damage that the defense of Ukraine wouldn't really work well and they could just roll over. It didn't happen. Despite having Belarus as um, a starting point for some of their troops to invade from the north, despite having um, some uh, business in Transnistria, that part of Moldova which Russia tries to make Russian again, um, despite all this and despite the attack from the south as well, from the Caucasus and Crimea, all of this did not really gain air superiority for Russia and um, the advance some might say it is slow or stalled. it is not really because the US took weeks to take Basra and Baghdad so uh, don't think of this as a victory just because Russia is uh, not that fast and taken uh, Kiev for example um, Kiev is a highly populated area full of angry Ukrainians who, who would shoot at invaders. It is not easy to take this, so it will take some time and hopefully it won't happen, but it might. So my first reaction was anger and frustration because I thought it would be swifter, but it isn't. And um, thinking about it, it makes sense. It is, it is also a matter of uh, resupplying. Um, you can't just rush in like the German state in World War during World War Two, I mean, it kind of worked, but it was dumb luck in a way, and you can't rely on this. So um, the overall plan of Russia wasn't bad at all. It was a plan that I would have also drafted. I mean, I would not have invaded in the first place. Okay, just again from a moral point of view, I would never have done this. But if I had to do this, if there was no other way, this would have been my plan too. To use the Belarusian um, front along with the Russian-owned um, borders and using Transnistria to at least stir some unrest, also a smart thing to do. So um, Putin is not stupid, okay? He, he went full retard, but he is not stupid. He now that he doesn't, doesn't get what he wants. Now he's threatening with um, nuclear warfare even. Um, you know, some say that dogs who bark a lot, they don't bite or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't think he wants mutual destruction because he wouldn't gain anything from it. At least now he can retreat and say, okay, you know what, um, we messed up, but at least we are out of this mess, um, whatever, although uh, here's what he really accomplished, okay, and this is something which I find interesting and also makes me happy, to be honest. What did Putin accomplish? He accomplished so far that most of the world sees him as not only a, the dictator he is, but also as a bad man. Most of the world doesn't like him. He is isolated from um, SWIFT, from other banking systems. Many countries around the world don't want to trade with Russia. Many um, people in Russia are protesting against the war because they see Ukrainians as uh, like a brother people or like a sibling people, so to speak. So he is very unpopular. There are massive protests. The economy is crumbling because, well, people just don't want to put up with anything Russian right now. And while this is hurting the uh, average Russian citizen as well, I kind of like it, okay? I, I do feel sorry for the Russians who are um, 
affected by it and do not want Putin in power. But your suffering is necessary, or your economic suffering, I mean, of course. I don't want physical harm to you. But your economic suffering is important, it's crucial, and it is great. It gives me a boner to, to know about it because this will force even those who don't oppose the war to protest because of the economic problems, you know, because their life is miserable. It's so shit they do want change and that is good. Destabilizing Russia from within is a good thing for NATO and for Ukraine, okay? As harsh as it might sound, some of you might really suffer from it if you're Russian. I am really sorry, but um, Putin brought it on you, okay? And um, you are now bearing the consequences. At the same time, the Ukrainians are suffering even more, so um, uh, there's that. Another thing he managed to accomplish is push Ukraine even more towards the EU and NATO. He also threatened Finland and Sweden. They are definitely more uh, likely to join NATO and the EU, although they might stay a bit hesitant still. Um, I personally would say they should do it now because if they um, if they don't, at some point this this kind of fervor that exists in NATO right now might go away and in the future when Finland and Sweden get attacked by Russia it takes a while again for all the European countries to really support them take them in whatever uh, but that's a different story so again uh, Russia united Western Europe against uh, Russia and interesting enough Germany, after so many years of trying to be all pacifist, despite having weapons deals with questionable regimes like Saudi Arabia, is now back um, back in action. The boys are back, so to speak, okay? I do get excited about this because I have been so upset about the fact that now, um, I think the fourth to last uh, defense minister of Germany did serve in the military at some point but wasn't really a defense minister person and afterwards you had three women who all had completely different um, jobs before they were neither in the military police nor intelligence service agency they were no military historians or anything that is relevant to defending the country and some maybe nepotism some lobby some kind of influence there that also made these random people in charge of the defense of germany in case of war that made no sense and now germany is finally getting their balls back okay so uh, that is uh, at least for Russia a really bad thing and in the current situation it is a good thing I do not want Germany to actively fight Russia but this the simple fact that Germany is now back in business and is no longer just the economic powerhouse of Europe but possibly also the military powerhouse overall um, the Ukrainian defense is quite good uh, despite the expectations of Ukraine being rather weak, uh, Ukraine, do, Ukraine is doing well. And uh, Zelensky, a true leader, he, uh, formerly a comedian and singer and actor, now the guy with the biggest balls in Europe, maybe the biggest balls in the world. This guy is making like serious politicians look like clowns. This guy... Yeah, I mean, dude, <laughs> I would give him my left testicle if he wants to, okay? Just just because out of respect, I would do that, okay? Seeing these crying Russian soldiers in captivity who regret the invasion fully, um, them not even daring to attack the civilians in Ukraine because 
they don't really see the point in the invasion. That is really good. And um, yeah, that is so far not too bad. But I still want to tell you this. The, uh, the way Russia invaded, the slow progress, it is normal, okay? Just to remind you, despite not having air superiority, which they should have, uh, but they didn't get air superiority for some reason, despite this, the overall advance speed isn't bad. You have to consider this, resupplying is important. Putin is maybe megalomaniac, maybe he's mad, but he's not stupid. I don't like him. I wouldn't mourn him if uh, something really bad happened to him. I don't know. I sometimes, look, I sometimes have some very um, hateful uh, thoughts too because of that. I have to admit that I probably no longer go to heaven if I ever were um, allowed to go there. And also, what I would like to do with Putin, those kinds of things, I don't want to go there. It just, just shows you what it does to a person when um, dealing with a situation like this. Now imagine actual, uh, you know, citizens of Ukraine. I'm not a Ukrainian, okay? How they might feel. This is, um, it is a big deal. It is very serious, okay? I make some jokes once in a while because I don't like to be sad or angry about it. It doesn't make it better, you know. But that is, you know, still a serious thing. This is why I'm telling you this. I want to be absolutely honest, okay. There is one concern about Russia not sending in their best and waiting for Ukraine to be um, uh, worn down, okay. Uh, this argument is valid okay the ancient romans did something very similar they sent in uh, before the reforms they sent in the willitas they would throw the javelins or sometimes the stones or anything they have to um, harass the enemy and hurt them a little and provoke them and then either retreat or wait for the hastati to arrive the hastati being young men who have to pay for their own equipment they are not that experienced they are mostly light infantry, so to speak. They would, of course, with you know good tactics and so on, with their large shields, um, fight the enemy, um, weaken them, maybe defeat them. But if not, not so bad, not that big of a deal. Behind them, a light of principes, the experienced soldiers who also have more money or had more money and paid their better equipment with that. They would then um, fight and they would definitely pose a bigger um, obstacle to the enemy. And even if they died, then you would have the Triari, which were like middle-aged men. Yeah, I get it. They are a bit older, but they have better equipment. They have experience and they are supposed to be more hardened. And um, this could be somewhat applied to Russia too, you know, send in the conscripts give them some armored vehicles, some lorries, send them there, try to secure some locations. If they fail, send in heavy cavalry, cavalry in modern warfare being tanks and uh, more heavily armored um, infantry vehicles. And, um, and then maybe send in some more elite troops, some more of the federal special um, operators etc that is possible but at the same time you already have some of the better equipped Russian troops alongside the conscripts um, and also one thing I want to point out is just like with the ancient Romans if or Napoleon's Napoleon's Grand Armée these troops were considered to be the best but they were always reserved uh, you know, in case things went really bad. So oftentimes they would not see combat, which means that they might not be that well uh, suited for warfare either because they might look great on paper and have good equipment, but maybe they didn't uh, gather so much experience. Think about it that way. Now you have 
Ukrainians who are determined, who are angry, who are motivated to fight for their country and give the enemies all the hell they can give, unleash pure badassery and um, fire and furious anger. That is really bad for Russia right now. They have uh, poked a hornet's nest. And um, yeah, I, I am quite optimistic, okay? All in all, that is the situation as of right now. There were some heroics. Um, heroics will get you killed, but um, we all know that. We do appreciate those who do the heroics to save the rest, uh, do these things for the greater good. So um, mad respect for all the Ukrainian defenders, including those who gave their lives. Okay. And um, I mean, you saw the, the memes, you saw the posts online, you saw the messages, the, the, the news. You know who I'm talking about. There's just so much that um, this war revealed about humanity that is very interesting and also uplifting, you know, um, uh, spiritually, emotionally speaking, I mean, that um, there is also something good that can come from at least the people who are involved, okay? And I mentioned my bad thoughts and so on, you know, this kind of anger, but in the in the case of Russian soldiers invading, many of them, again, conscripts, many of them don't want to fight the war. If you show them so much compassion that they feel obliged um, to uh, stop the fighting, if they are so moved that they feel just shame and guilt and will just cease fighting against Ukraine, that can really work. The other alternative is, and I'm not saying you should do this, but the other alternative would be the complete opposite, which is show utter barbaric horror to them. Okay, again, morally speaking, very bankrupt. But the Vietnamese did that to the US. It didn't always go well because the US soldier uh, and I will talk about this in a different video, maybe. At some point, only saw uh, a threat, a threat, threat, a threat. Bomb this, bomb this, napalm this, whatever. Uh, this can be bad, but if you do it selectively, the officers who, um, with confidence, led these Russian troops into Ukraine, if you do this to them, it could work. Again, not my recommendation, because I think the nice way is much better and will give a better image of Ukraine. Uh, some older people in fancy houses making decisions um, that affect other people's lives. Politicians who are not willing to fight themselves but send others to do the dirty work. Um, yeah, it is that. Will Putin use nuclear weapons? I highly doubt that. I knew that Putin would invade Ukraine. I kind of knew it. With the nuclear weapons, I don't think he would want to go out that way because as of right now, he can still uh, try for a white peace or even uh, give up all his ambitions in Ukraine, retreat. But then he would still have Russia if he uses the nukes. The atomic bombs will basically take away everything that he has worked for so hard because he did work hard to get get Russia where Russia is now. It is really uh, also his work, okay? And um, wasting it like that, I don't think so. And so I highly doubt he would use the nuclear weapons. And even if, I would even go so far, even if countries like Poland, Germany, um, uh, France or the US sending troops to aid Ukraine, even then he wouldn't use nukes because um, when he uses them, he will be destroyed. There's also a chance that the defense, um, the anti-missile defense systems that NATO has 
will take down at least some, perhaps even most of the nuclear weapons. And there will still be uh, some NATO power standing upon Russian ashes. And this makes no sense for Putin. I don't think this is going to happen. Um, but um, what do I know? I'm just some idiot with a microphone. So um, take this with a grain of salt. Okay, that's been quite a long video so far. I don't want to drag this on forever. I thank you for your patience. And I'd like to see your comments, regardless of which side of the war you are on whether you are from Russia or Ukraine or an ally of Russia or an ally of Ukraine, um, allied country, I mean. If you are pro-Putin, uh, I mean, I still want to know what your thoughts are so I can understand you, of course. But um, whatever. Just so we're clear, I am not making this video to be anti-Russian. Not at all, okay? Uh, some of my friends from childhood, Russian, I still know Russians, get along with them well. Um, I There are some Russian um, YouTubers, for example, or celebrities or whatever, athletes, great guys. Um, and um, yeah, this is not anti-Russian, but this is pro-humanity and Vladimir Putin is threatening humanity. And this is why I had to say it, okay? Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Slava Ukraini.